What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you seven ways for you to do a basic barbell curl to get bigger biceps. A lot of people ask, you know, hey, how do I get my biceps bigger? And what they're looking for is basically like a special type of exercise or a special way of doing something. And the key factor is no matter if you have really big arms or if you have small arms, it's all built with the same exercise, you know, the same exercises. And one of the best exercises is a regular barbell curl. But there are so many different ways to do a barbell curl, and when you start doing barbell curls versus doing them 10 years later, it's still the barbell curl, right? Just like a bench press, just like a squat, it's all the same. The difference is how you do these basic simple exercises. The people that have really big guns and really big biceps, they just do the exercises better to work their biceps, but it's not the different exercise. It's all the same exercise. So today we're gonna to be talking about different ways of how to do a barbell curl so this way you can get more gains in your biceps and build bigger arms. So if you check out the board here, we have seven different ways. And we're gonna go down every one of them. I'm gonna talk about what it does, how it hits it, and basically how to do it. Let's get started. What I have here is a straight bar. And if you're asking, can I, do I have to use a big barbell? Can I use a shorter bar? Yes, you can. Can I use a uh, easy curl bar? You know, the ones with the curves? Yeah, you could too also. So I'm just kind of using a straight bar because I like straight bars. And I'm gonna, this is actually probably the most popular type of uh, bars for uh, barbell curls. Well, actually it's not, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna use this anyways. All right, so, but just so you know, you can use it for anything. First one is a wide grip. So when you're doing a wide grip, if your shoulder width standard grip is right here where your shoulders are, wide grip is basically anything wider than your shoulders. So usually what I like to do is I like to be about two to three inches wider than my shoulders as a wide grip bar, or as a wide grip uh, barbell curl. So this way when you curl up, what it does, if you notice right here, what it does is it hits the inside of your biceps. That's why the inside of the biceps are showing. So this allows you to do more, work on more of the inside of the biceps versus the outside. So your biceps, the way it's shaped, you have your inside, you have your peak, you have the outside area right here, and you even have your brachialis too. So you want to you want to make sure you're hitting it in all angles. So this way you develop big full biceps. So a wide grip is working on the inside of your biceps. Next one is close grip. So while the wide grip works on the inside, close grip works on the outside. So again, if we start off with a standard grip like this, close grip, I'm usually, I would usually put my thumb where my pinky is. So if you guys take a look right here, see how I'm grabbing this as a standard grip. So where my pinky is right here, I'm gonna put my thumb right there. So this way I'm doing it on both sides. So now the grip, I'm closer, I'm grabbing it closer than the, my shoulders, or basically I'm grabbing it inside my shoulders. So doing it this way, is now going to build and put focus on the out, outer part of your biceps, okay? Giving you more of that thickness on the outside here. So, wrist back versus wrist forward. So your wrist plays a big part in bicep curls because if you're grabbing a bar and you curl your wrist back, now this is putting a lot more emphasis on your biceps, but if you notice, if I put my wrist forward, what this does, if you ever do any type of uh, wrist curls or you know, work on your forearms and you do this, right? So this action here is actually working on your forearms and not on your biceps. So if you're curling and you wanna keep your wrist back, this is working a lot of biceps. If you want to curl to focus more on your wrist, you put your wrist towards yourself and then you do the same thing. Now you're going to be building a lot more of this muscle here. Okay, so if you see a lot of guys that have a big muscle right here in their forearms, it's because they're doing a lot of curls with their wrists inwards. Okay, that or they're doing a lot of heavy lifts using their arms. But this is a really good way to build that muscle here in your forearms with your wrist forward. If you want to emphasize on your, on your biceps, put your wrist backwards, okay? And then the pressure will travel to your biceps instead of stopping here at your wrist or on your forearms. Next thing, a forward range negative. So, this is basically to where when you're doing a curl, normally if you notice, I'm gonna stand to the side so you can get a really good look here. So you notice where my elbow's at, right? So 
The normal basic curl is you keep your elbows next to you, you curl up, and you curl down. Keeping your elbows there and not moving it much. So when you're doing a forward range negative, basically you curl up and then your goal is to come outwards and come down. So the reason, the difference between, I'll put the bar down so I can show you all. The difference between is when you extend your arms outwards and then you hold it out, now you're working a lot more on the bicep because it's a lot harder to have the weight farther away from you. Okay, so for example, if I grab the bar close to me, super close to me, I'm gonna show you like a very extreme example. If I grab it really close to me, see how easy it is? Now, vice versa, I'm gonna go very extreme. Grabbing it out like this, look how hard it is just to hold it there. Okay, so that puts a lot more emphasis on your biceps. So what you do is you can curl up regular and then come out. Curl up and out. Curl up and out. So this way when you're curling up, you're contracting your muscles and shortening it and then when you come out, you're allowing more tear because it's a lot harder to hold it out. So this way you work more on the negative. Next one, half reps on the bottom half and on the top half. So you guys ever seen somebody do like 21s? You know, the bicep workout to where they grab a bar and they'll do seven reps on top, seven reps on bottom, and then seven reps, full reps, all the way up and all the way down. So half reps is basically where you're limiting the range of motion in your curl to either working on the top or working on the bottom. And the difference though is when you're working on the top, you're working on the contraction on the bicep, on the muscle that's right at the top of the biceps versus on the bottom working more of the lower. So if you wanted to, let's say, for example, you got really good lower biceps, right, which is the area right here, but you want to put more emphasis, more meat on the top of your biceps. What you may end up doing is half reps on the top. So this way you come down to where you're about 90 degrees and then you come right back up. Okay, arms are formed, your body will respond to the type of exercise that you do. So while genetics play a big part, but when you're doing different curls, if you train a certain way, your arms will shape a certain way. So again, now vice versa, let's say you wanna work more on the bottom part of your biceps, then you would keep your arms locked out and then you will come up halfway and then drop it back down. So this way you're always focusing the emphasis on the lower part of your biceps instead of the upper part. The next one, we have cheat reps. So cheat reps is basically to where you're cheating the form. A perfect form bicep curl would be something along the lines of chest out, elbows next to you, bar is pretty much in front of you, you just curl up and down. But when you're cheating, what you're doing is you're cheating this form. You're doing something that's breaking the regular perfect form, but in a trade for that, you're either using heavier weight or you're doing more repetitions. So let's say I got weight on this bar and I can usually do 10 reps, but if I cheat, and here's the example of cheating. You know, this is a regular curl, right? Just up and down. But if I'm cheating, I might do something like this. A little swing. You see, you see how that bar just went up like that? I haven't even used any biceps yet. See? So I might do a little this. I might rock a little bit, you know? So what I'm doing is I'm cheating the form. Now, maybe I'm not working on that lower part of my biceps. Remember we talked about those half, half reps? So look how much the bar has went up without me doing anything, you know? So cheat reps, the bad part about cheat reps is you're not working that full range of motion all the way down and all the way up. You're not working that full bicep. But the part of your bicep that you are working, which in this case, if you're, let's say, rocking, you'll come up, but then the bottom half you cheat because you're kind of doing this, you see? So you're only working parts of your bicep but the trade-off is the part that you are working, you're either getting in, let's say, more repetition, which causes more muscle tear and causes for that part of your bicep to get bigger, or you're using more weight than what you can usually handle with perfect form, which, again, you're only working part of your bicep, but that more weight that you're using causes bigger tears in that part of your bicep, which causes your bicep to get bigger and stronger. So there's pros and cons to that method of cheating. 
But cheating is not just a bad thing, absolute. It's actually a good method and technique to help you build more muscle and help you break plateaus, just as long as you know how to do it right. For you guys that are beginners, if you haven't got your perfect form locked down, don't try to cheat because if not, you won't be able to emphasize the part of your muscle you're trying to work on enough. You know, so you gotta be able to learn how to do it correctly before you go into cheat reps, okay? But it's a really good technique to do, bar, bi, to do a bicep curls to build bigger biceps. So, negative tension sets. So, positive and negative. So, positive part of the repetition is to where you're shortening the muscle, right? So, shortening the muscle basically means you're balling the muscle up. Negative means you're coming down. So a negative tension set. So I don't know if you ever heard the term, you don't grow during your positive, you only grow during the negative. Because you gotta remember, your muscles grow from being tore and then through eating the right foods and rest, the little micro tears in your muscles get filled in and they become bigger, okay? So your muscles don't tear when you come up. Your muscles tear when they come down, okay? Think about a, think about a muscle, you know? When you shorten it, it comes like this, but when it stretches out, that's when it tears. So this negative part is when it tears. And a negative tension set is basically to where you're holding that negative part a lot longer than your positive. So for example, I'm gonna show you a few reps. So let's say we got some weight on here. So we do a rep and then it come down, let's say a four second negative. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you're focusing on the tearing part of the rep. So this way you can get more work on your biceps without having to switch up exercise or do, you know, totally something different. So these techniques, a lot of these techniques can be combined. They can be used back and forth. For example, you can go with the wrist back, forward range, tension set. So you can really swap out a lot of different things. Put cheat reps in every one of these methods. And these are seven methods, but there are also other methods of how to do a bicep curl or how to do a barbell curl. So the goal of today is to realize that when it comes to building big biceps, you don't have to try any fancy equipment or any fancy new exercises. Your main focus is to learn how to do this basic exercise like a barbell bicep curl, but do it in a way that works your biceps more and more and more. Focusing on building more muscle, focusing on tearing that muscle more, focusing on putting more tension on that muscle. In different ways like that, so this way, you can build bigger biceps, and also there's a reason why this exercise is so popular and why the guys with the biggest arms are still doing the same type of exercise because it's also one of the most effective exercises, just like the bench press, okay? Same rules apply. There's so many ways to how to do that also, okay? So thanks for watching this video, guys. Don't forget, try it out next time that you're doing, when you're doing your bicep curl, and instead of going into a whole bunch of different machines and things like that, stick with the barbell, but try different methods, different grips, and different ways of doing your sets to see how your biceps will respond. So thanks for watching guys, more workouts, nutrition, sixpackshortcuts.com. Peace out.